All right, folks, welcome back to Politically Homeless. I'm Dave. I've got a very special guest on today. Uh, I've actually uploaded a couple of his videos to the channel already because he said I could, but I figured I would bring him on uh, in person uh, via Zoom. And his name is Adam Fannin. He is the pastor of a great church in Jacksonville, Florida called Law of Liberty Baptist Church. Did I get that right, Pastor? Yes, sir. That's correct. Law of Liberty. Law. Of, why did you name the the, the church? Where did you get that from? Law of Liberty. For sure. So let me show you in the book of James. There's actually two mentions of it. And in James chapter one, first of all, in verse twenty five, it says, "But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, so." The Bible is the law of liberty. Law of liberty means it's another word for the Bible. So if you look into the Bible and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, this is why the book of James was written for Christians that are already saved, how they should live. So if you want God's blessing on your life, look in the Bible, do what it says. You're going to see some things that you need to work on. Don't get offended. Just do what it says. Right. Then he says the same thing in James 2. Very similar. He says, so speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Fascinating concept. So how should I live as a Christian? Well, I need to live and talk like somebody that's going to be judged out of the word of God, both here and there. So there's, you know, the, the judgment. If I want God's blessing on my life here in the earth, then I better obey what he says. And if I do that, you know, there's a blessing, but ultimately there is a reward to come. Wow. Amen. Um, very well explained. Now, um, before we started, there are a couple of issues I wanted to talk about before we get into our main topic. Um, you say you're you're kind of a libertarian guy. I don't know if you're registered as a as a libertarian. Um, you live in the state of Florida, as do I. Um, I've been kind of on the edge of of taking that approach. You know that that step, that next step of getting out of the Republican Party. I'm currently actually a registered independent. Um, because I'm so kind of uh, fed up with the two-party system. So what does it mean to be a, a Christian libertarian? And um, there are a couple of issues, uh, abortion and um, the legalization of, of pretty much all drugs. That's what sure. most libertarians believe in. Well, there is a difference, first of all, between a libertarian Christian and a Christian libertarian. Okay. Christian comes first. Right. So my authority is the word of God. My law comes from the word of God. Now, I also, as a libertarian, do not believe that it's my purpose in life to make everybody believe like I believe or to do what I say they should do. God has used his people at different times to judge evil nations, and yet God has also used more evil nations also to judge his people or evil nations. As a libertarian, I do believe in freedom. I believe in liberty. I believe that we should all have the right, uh, God-given rights to live how we want and raise our children. You look in the Old Testament and you see that there were many false prophets that threw their children into the fire unto Moloch. Yeah. Well, they had that right, and it was a very foolish thing that they did. They needed to be told the truth. They needed to be rebuked. God wiped them out. And so as a Christian libertarian, I do not believe that it's the Christian duty for our nation to wage endless wars around the world. If there is a nation that is cursed because they don't want Jesus as their God, well, that curse is upon them. So how do we combat that? Well, we send, as Christians, we send the gospel. We send missionaries. We try to um, infiltrate their country through uh, gospel preaching videos if we can't get in the door. There are some closed countries where you can't even get in. Right, right. So um, somebody comes up to you at your church and says, hey, pastor, I hear you're a libertarian. Uh, what if I want to go and do a line of cocaine? Is that OK? I would say you'd be breaking God's law. So, so my authority is in the church and in my home. My authority is not in their home. And it is my job to teach the word of God. And if you're not sober, that's a very dangerous place to be. OK, fair People enough. You need to be warned. Yeah. So you're you're basically saying like you have the hierarchy there and you explained it versus you know Christian libertarian versus libertarian Christian. 
um, and Christian obviously would come first. Um, why do you think the libertarian philosophy, though, is um, it is definitely gaining some momentum out there? Uh, and I think there are a lot of disaffected conservatives who are looking at their, you know, their conservative agenda or, or the, the people who are trying to put forth a so-called conservative agenda. And it it doesn't seem like they're conserving much of anything. And a lot of people are scratching their head because they've gone through this election cycle thing and they're promised something. And then what happens is they pretty much get, you know, two entities driving over the same cliff, maybe at slightly different speeds. Is that why you went more libertarian or was there something else in your life that made you move in that direction? Well, I guess 9-11 was a big wake up call for me. Uh, yeah, I was a conservative Christian voter. And when 9-11 happened, I was under the assumption that it was, you know, people from the Middle East that just hated us because we were free and Christian. Yeah. I mean, that is the lie that the media was giving us. Okay. And I, at the time I, I worked on the road with some um, international people and one of them, we got into a very hot argument. They were not Christian. They were European. And they said, you don't know what you're talking about. You just, you believe the news. And I'm like, no, I believe the Bible. And we got into an argument about 9-11 and who actually was responsible for it. And I started digging in and I found out real quick that it's not what the media said it was. And I realized like building number seven was the big indicator. This building just collapsed on its own five o'clock in the afternoon. There was all sorts of secrets and information and cover up money. There was all sorts of things about building number seven, but everything that happened on 9-11 became the reason that Christians wanted to go up to Iraq, but they knew that Iraq wasn't guilty. Right. And so it became very confusing. So what are we doing? Why are we going to war? Why are we attacking somebody in the Middle East if they haven't attacked us? Now, mm -hmm. Jesus said, blessed be the peacemakers. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's our Christian duty to be a peacemaker. Sure. Now, I still believe in self-defense as a libertarian. I'm not a pacifist by any means. Uh, perhaps more of a non-resistant per se. I'm not going to go out and pick a fight or be a bully. That would be a sin. However, if somebody messes with my family, I have a duty. Yeah, I have a responsibility to take care of the problem. Sure. Now, um, so when you say 9-11, like the, the, there are theories about 9-11 out there. Some of them are a little more uh, outlandish than, than others. Um, I, I have this suspicion that our, our government kind of knew that um, – there was a possibility. I mean, there are a couple of radio commentators actually who um, made the prediction that uh, a plane was going to fly into the trade center. And it was it was it just the fact that um, we knew that this could happen and we we really didn't prepare for it? Or uh, do you think the government was directly involved in it? I, I mean, either way, I'm not going to look at you in, in a you know weird way. If, regardless of how well, you answer. This was not the first time that 9-11, so to speak, was to happen. Um, there was a 9-11 under Clinton's administration. Right. Where there was a bombing of the Trade Center, and I believe it happened in 93. Yep, I think you're right. And there was a gentleman that was recording conversations with, you know, the Alphabet Gang. I forget, you know, CIA, EI, DIA, FBI, one of those dhs you know one of the secret agencies yeah alphabet soup yeah alphabet yeah the alpha, the alpha go figure that's uh, google's name anyway <laughs> they were uh recording a conversation with him because they were saying no give these bad guys the hot you know the, the bomb and it's like well, well wait i don't want to do this because they're actually going to do it i think we should stop right now and go ahead and arrest these guys they're going to do it so no give it to him anyway so there was an attack and they were trying to push through what then eventually became the patriot act after you know, the real 9-11. Um, it wasn't just Clinton. Daddy Warbush was involved where he proclaimed the New World Order on September 11th, 10 years prior to it actually happening. Uh, the television station Fox actually played a pilot episode of a TV show where a plane was hijacked and flown into 
the trade center. Kerosene burns at 1800 degrees. That's jet fuel. Right. Steel needs about 3000 to burn. If you look at architects and engineers for 9-11 truth, anybody with a mind can quickly see things are not what we've been told. Now that caused me to question and just open up. Okay, so what is going on? Well, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. There are literally people in Hollywood, in the banking elite, and especially in Washington that literally worship Satan in the dark. And they come out in public and they tell people, oh, we're Christian, we're a Christian nation. And, and they're trying to push this form of Christian nationalism mm -hmm. so that they can get average people fired up for their agenda, which is not truly a biblical agenda. Yeah. Well, um, not much I can add to that. I, I appreciate you just telling us, you know, what you believe about 9-11. Um, I, I honestly, I, I, I don't know what to think anymore. And that's one of the reasons I'm having you on here, because I wanted to get your opinion on some, some things. Um, now, when it comes to what's going on, uh, we just had this budget that went through, $95 billion budget. Um and it was it was put through by the, well, I'm just going to say it, the Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, was the guy primarily responsible for that. Um, Donald Trump at one point called him MAGA Mike Johnson, um, kind of putting the the label of MAGA on him, whether he wanted that or not. It seems like he's embraced it because he's been down to Mar-a-Lago a few times to visit the former president, and I'm pretty much. Almost 100% certain, uh, Adam, that they're on the same page. Um, yeah. And so 95, and this is the guy who's supposed to come in and, and you know, rescue us from the guy who's currently there. Um, and I, I just, and this is where I'm at right now. I don't understand um, how Christians, and, and I'm, I'm putting, because I know people are going to watch this who are going to disagree with me, but why... Christians are so enamored uh, by Donald Trump. There, there's there's something bizarre going on here. And no matter what Trump does, no matter what side of an issue he takes, right? It just seems as though they, the, you know, the first two words they say to me, pastor, is yeah, but. That's what they say to me all the time. Yeah, but. And I go, well, wait a minute. What do you mean? Yeah, but. I mean, when do we get to a principle here? When do we get to, do you have a conscience anymore? I mean, okay, so, and and let's let's divide this up too. Now, Ukraine, a lot of conservatives are kind of like, yeah, Ukraine's bad, Ukraine, I can't give money to Ukraine. A hundred, a hundred Republicans did anyway. Um, Israel, obviously, is like the third rail. You know, you can't, can't well, we, we should give money to Israel. Well, 1,200 people or so, I don't know the exact number, back on October 7th, um, something happened, and I, I hate to sound like one of those Congress person that said something happened and some people did something, but there was an attack, okay? And I, I kind of look at it a little bit like the 9-11 thing, like it was a pretext for, okay, so now we can do what we really want to do. And I don't think, here's, here's my position. I want peace in the Middle East. All right. I don't care who's doing what to who. I want peace in the Middle East. And so you really can't question if you're a conservative type, you can't really question the funding to Israel. But boy, you can make a stink maybe about the funding uh, for Ukraine. But now it seems everybody is in on this. So there's nobody to turn this back. So I'm like, OK, I'm done with these these two parties. And I wanted your thoughts on um maybe the budget and then the original title of this uh talk was you know the morality of endless wars you know we are we are just i i think we could balance our budget in maybe a decade or so if we just stopped if we just stopped we pulled the troops back um and and stop this madness and it, th how does this make us safer so I'll give you the floor, Pastor Adam. Sure. So when it comes to Israel, there is a new doctrine within the Christian community called dispensationalism. It originated in the 1830s. And with it, they teach that people were saved by works throughout time, which is dead wrong. 
God doesn't change. Salvation has always been the same. It's always been by faith in the Son. But dispensationalism was created to help then propel a political doctrine called Zionism, started by Theodore Herzl in the late 1800s. About the same time, you had Hebrew, which had been a dead language for about 2,000 years. It was revived. Now, it, it was revived by men that only spoke Yiddish. And so they put this Yiddish influence on a dead language of Hebrew, thereby changing a lot of the vowel points. The Rothschilds got involved 50 years later. There's the Balfour Declaration, which established the state of Israel. It is a Rothschild state. If you rewind a little bit, you'll find out that the people that are in Israel today, there are many that are what's called Khazarian. They're of a Ukrainian-German descent. They're white Europeans that have a religion of Judaism. They are not Semitic people as the people of Turkey and Israel was in the Old Testament, and Syria and Iran. There are many Semitic peoples that are still in the Middle East. Many of them do not practice Judaism. So white Europeans came to the Middle East and said, God has given us this land forever. Now, the thing about covenants with God in the Bible is they're always conditional. If you do this, then I will do that. They're always conditional. Salvation is by faith alone. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to go to hell. So there's always a condition. Nonetheless, they, through Zionism, restored Hebrew and dispensationalism, uh, John Nelson Darby, very shady character, um, C.I. Schofield, horrible person, the Oxford um, Company. I mean, through their publishings, they get into the Moody Bible Institute. So Bible-believing churches, Baptist churches, evangelicals began to become dispensationalists, believing that it was God's will that the new founded nation of Israel, full of Europeans, should have a state and it's God's will that they would. The problem is the majority of the verses they used for that are actually verses that point to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a millennium coming. God's going to reign on this earth. There's a new earth coming. Those are the land promises that are eternal. That will happen. Now, once Israel was established, then there were many incidences. One that I think is important for your viewers to know about is when the USS Liberty, this was an American vessel, was attacked by Israel in 1967. Most people don't know about this, or they've forgotten about it, the men that were on board. I mean, they were attacked for hours, and they were radioing in, and they were being told to stay put as Israel attacked them. Later, Israel said, oh, we thought you were an Egyptian vessel. This was a false flag incident. They were trying, I believe, to use it as an incident to get America involved in the Middle East in 1967. Hmm. So Sounds this familiar. has been going on for some time. Yeah. Then you have the likes of like a John Hagee who preaches a false gospel. He says that they didn't re the Jews did not reject their Christ. They didn't see Jesus as Christ, which makes him an antichrist. The Bible is very clear about what an antichrist is. That is someone that rejects that Jesus has come in the flesh. That the Christ has come in the flesh. And I don't use this. Uh, phrase as an attack on anybody, but I, I want to show you a couple verses about it. I, I do think it's essential and very important that we as Christians understand what the Bible says about this, because America does not have the duty to fight all of Israel's wars. Now, we've given Israel about $300 billion. Yeah, yeah. That's... That, and 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 even if you're my my argument is too even if this somebody's watching this right they're 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 not a christian they're 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 not really understanding the theology here they're not understanding the arguments i i just from just a a common sense point of view like we're sending billions of dollars to foreign countries and this country is inflating its currency. Our this is why you go to the grocery store right now, and you have you go to Walmart, and and you've got three bags of groceries. The other day, Pastor, I I checked out. It was eighty four dollars for three bags. And yeah, I bought some pretty good stuff, but it wasn't the greatest stuff. And I'm I'm saying to myself, 
what is going on here? And this is a, this is the, I'm not going to Publix because those three bags would be over a hundred bucks. So you know what I'm talking Wait, about. I see you smiling. Don't go to Costco because, well, you'll spend 300 you know? <laughs> well, plus you've got to buy huge quantities of things that you're- Then half of it goes bad by the time you get to it. Anyway. Right. Yeah, it's another go, okay, we'll see we could have a cover. Next next time we have you on, we'll talk about uh, grocery stores, ones to avoid. Um, but so just from, and, and I wanted to have you on because your Christian perspective on this uh, within the Christian church or the evangelical, what, what do you consider yourself? You're an independent Baptist, correct? Correct. Would you, if someone said, hey, are you an evangelical, what would you say to them? No? Yes? I, I wouldn't typically use that phrase, although I evangelize. We, we go out preaching the gospel every week. We knock on doors every week as a church. But right. evangelical is a phrase of a group that broke free from fundamentalism, the fundamentalists were those that said, wait a minute, we're getting too far away from what the Bible said from those foundational beliefs. We need to get back to that. The evangelicals said, no, we need a big tent and we need to be worldly to invite worldly people in. That's how we increase the numbers of those that are in the church. Right. I strongly disagree with that. We're called to be separate. Yeah. We're called to be separate and distinct from the world. So uh, separation is a very common Baptist distinctive. But that's what the S in Baptist, if you uh, you know, th there's a common um, uh, saying on what Baptist stands for. S is for separation. And I believe that. And I am an independent fundamental Baptist, although I disagree with probably the majority of my IFB brethren. Yeah. There are many fundamental Baptists that have bought into the Darby and Schofield lie, a man-made doctrine of dispensationalism. With it comes a uh, pre-tribulation rapture. They believe that we're just going to be going along and there will be no signs or evidence. And all of a sudden we're going to be raptured out of here. So in their fear mongering mind, what they want to do, well, if, if it gets bad, if the antichrist sets up his kingdom, then God will come and snatch us out of here faster. Therefore let's vote for war in the middle East because that'll bring Armageddon, but we're out of uh, here before Armageddon. Well, uh, the Bible is very clear that we're actually going to see tribulation, affliction, and persecution on the earth. And I don't think it's right for a Christian to be voting for war. You, do you realize what's happened Amen. in Gaza since this little war broke out? 70% of the people that have been killed are unarmed women and children. Yeah. Now, wait a what Christian in their right mind would say the American government needs to buy bullets that should kill unarmed women and children. Explain yeah. that one to me. Yeah, I can't. Hamas, the enemy, they're only men. Why are we killing? Why is 70% of who we're killing unarmed civilians, women and children? Yeah. It's ungodly. Yeah. It, it's that, unchrist like. Yeah. But again, in Israel, they're waning on their Christ, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. What is an antichrist? This is somebody that is opposed to Jesus Christ, or they say there is a, another Christ coming. And there is another Christ coming, I warn you. In fact, little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, that antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. The antichrist is coming. Israel is preparing to slaughter red heifers, they want to build their temple. Yeah, Why? Well, because they this. believe they can bring on their Christ, their Messiah. Now, it's interesting. They believe in two different uh, Christs, if you will. They have the Ben Joseph, Ben David. They talk about that they believe there will be the political person and the spiritual leader, which is exactly what the book of Revelation unfolds for us, that there will be the false prophet as a beast, and there will be the false... And there will be the uh, Antichrist himself. So there's the two characters in Revelation, and that's exactly what their prophecy sets up for. It's interesting, there is only one nation that is expecting a Christ to come for the first time, and that would be this nation of Israel that is predominantly made up of Europeans. We must delineate and distinguish between Zionism is a political movement. 
the Orthodox Jewish community rejects Zionism. They reject Zionism. They say it's not right. It's not of God. Hmm. Rabbinical Judaism calls them anti-Semitic for rejecting this political movement called Zionism. Now, wait a minute. They are Semites, aren't they? Well, a Semite is somebody that comes from Shem, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. So that is a bloodline. But guess what? We're not saved by our blood. We're not saved by our zip code. And religion won't save you either. Only Jesus can save you. So any Christian that says, well, we have to support them because, because what? They're God's people without God? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's the that's the part. You, know, you just hit on the part right there that I said to my friend very flippantly because I'm not I didn't have the the knowledge that you have on the topic and it just it just didn't make sense to me and he said, "Well, Genesis 12:3." That's what he said to me, Genesis 12:3. And so I went Genesis 12:3. Let's look at that cuz this is important. Genesis yeah, chapter Maybe you can 12. explain, yeah, explain Genesis 12:3 to the audience. I think that would be very good. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. This is often quoted as, if you bless Israel, God will bless you. Right. That's what I the was The problem told. is, this isn't talking about Israel. <laughs> this is talking to one man, and his name is Abram. He's not even Abraham yet at this moment. God does rename him later. In the King James Bible, which is the sharper sword, it's the only Bible version that doesn't have the polluted Catholic doctrine, the deleted verses, he says, I will bless them that bless thee. Thee is singular. Ye would be plural. Thee, thine, thou is singular in the King James. So he says to one man, I will bless those people that bless you individually, and I will curse them that curseth thee. But then here's the promise, all the families in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In Galatians chapter 3, that it tells us that that is Jesus Christ. He is the seed. Uh, Israel is not the root. Jesus Christ is the root. And we are branches that have been grafted in by faith in Jesus Christ. Those that were in Israel, it says in, in Romans, not all Israel are of Israel. That is the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. You say, what's that mean? Well, there are people that claim to be Israelites, and perhaps they are in the form of a nation, but they are not in the spiritual sense. The name Israel is another name for Jesus, just as Emmanuel. Multiple times in the Bible, it says, for thy name, we are called after thy name. If my people, which are called by my name. Well, what name are they talking about? Well, Israel in the Old Testament. And then in Galatians 6, it tells us that if we be of this rule by believing in Jesus Christ, we are the Israel of God. So we are a spiritual nation, and I want you to understand that God's people have always existed prior to the formation of the nation called Israel with 12 tribes. There were always God's people. In the resurrection, at the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, all believers of all time are resurrected together, those that were before Israel, those that were in Israel that were actually saved, and those after Israel. The book of Hebrews tells us that they fell away because of unbelief. They didn't enter into the promised land because of unbelief. So anybody that was born in Israel, perhaps they had the bloodline, let's just say, uh, of Judah, and they practiced the religion of Judaism. If they didn't believe in the promise of the Son, God said, you're not my people. Now, right. we as Christians are God's chosen people today. It is not a nation that rejects Jesus. We are God's people. And this is a hard saying for most Christians because they have heard the, the propaganda for many years. Well, they've also, um, they've also said things like, well, then you believe in replacement theology. That's what I've heard, and I hadn't heard that term. I honest to goodness hadn't heard heard it, and I I began doing some research, and pretty much every every video I pulled up on replacement theology was somebody rebuking it and denouncing it and saying that it's evil. But you don't necessarily believe in a replacement theology, right? You believe more in a sort of timeline that starts before you just mentioned the twelve tribes, right? From the very beginning, you were God's people if you believed in God, correct? 
Right. So to say that we have replaced Israel is false because, and I preached a whole sermon, the truth about replacement theology, where I debunk it because the church did not replace Israel. The church has always existed. The church is the congregation or the assembly, and we see them in the Bible. In fact, if we just look at church. By the way, this has been really helpful with the uh, the scripture verses on screen and just uh, the way you've done this. It's, it's very good. So I appreciate what you're doing here. Amen. I was, I was praying it would be a blessing. So check this out. When you look at the word church, first of all, you see it twice in Matthew 16, Matthew 16, Matthew 18. Matthew 16 is where Jesus says, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church, right? And then he goes on mm -hmm. to Matthew 18. This is uh, church discipline. If your brother offends, you go to him, uh, then bring two or three witnesses, and then bring it before the church. So Matthew was written to the church, but dispensationalists say, oh, no, 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 Matthew's not written for you. In fact, the Old Testament's not for you. Mark's not for you. That's for the Greeks. And <laughs> Luke's not for you. John's for you. And part of Acts might be for you, but you better oh. stop before you get to... Hebrews, James, John, Peter, those are not written for you either, and certainly Revelation is not for you. Now, that's kind of confusing. Dispensationalism chops up the scriptures, and it says the Bible's not all for you, but the Bible is actually all for you. Every bit of it you can learn from. So if the church is mentioned in Matthew, then it's for you, and in Matthew 24, it tells us exactly what's going to happen in the end times. Um, I want to point out a few other great ones. In mm -hmm. Acts chapter 7, in Acts chapter 7, it says, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Well, wait a minute. The church in the wilderness, I thought the church started after Acts. That's what's commonly taught. No, Moses was with the congregation. He was with the hmm. assembly of God's people that trusted in the Son of God, the Lamb of God for salvation. So this is an Old Testament reference to the church. Yeah. You keep looking, and let's see, there's another really good one in Hebrews, I think, is where it's at. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 2 is quoting the book of Psalms with David, and he says, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. It's quoting the Old Testament, and instead of saying congregation, it's using the word church. So right. did the church start after Acts? No, the church has always existed. Well, what is the church? The church or the gathering of God's people, the assembly. So first of all, we have to get the word church right. Second, we need to get the word Israel right. Because the problem with most people that, that want war in Israel that call themselves Christians, it's two things. It's Israel and eminency. They believe Jesus can come, can come back at any moment. And right after we go, there's going to be war in Israel. Well, we're going to see war in Israel before Jesus comes back. The scriptures couldn't be any clearer. We're going to see the Antichrist come back and persecute Christianity. He's going to proclaim to be God. He's going to stand in the temple of God saying he's God. He's going to exalt himself above all other gods. So this is actually going to happen in all the rest of the world. I mean, the world is going to follow after him. There are many seeking for the Maitreya or the, the, more, the Muslims looking for the Mahdi. The Mormons have many strange prophecies about Jesus showing up in different ways and multiple times uh, to their special Mormon council and that sort of thing. And the whole world that doesn't truly believe in Jesus Christ for salvation will be deceived. Now, I think there's going to be a lot of libertarians that are kind of rebel at heart that don't want to take a chip in their hand, and they don't want to say <laughs> some man is God. And yeah. I just pray that we as Christians have left good enough of a testimony and preach the gospel good enough that it hits their heart at that moment. They say, wait a minute, they were right about Jesus. Yeah. Because when it happens, many will know right away, this is exactly what was foretold, and then they'll make it illegal to preach the gospel of Jesus. They'll actually be decapitating people for it. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> it's, I don't even want to think about that, but uh, the way you've explained it, obviously, um, this makes sense to me. I don't, I don't know why this doesn't make sense to more people. And again, this is one of the reasons I wanted to have you on. I wanted to talk about, is it moral to send just your taxpayer dollars, you know, just, just from a, um, even a non-theological point of view, just to say, Hey, why am I sending? I mean, we, we worked really hard for this little paycheck that we got this week and the prices keep going up. Why do the prices keep going up? Well, the prices keep going up 
because we keep fighting these endless wars. That's one reason. There are other reasons. We've got the Federal Reserve, which I'm sure you're, um, you've got some strong opinions about. Um, so, yeah. But the, the bottom line here is that Christians are kind of like they're funding their own demise unless everybody's got so much disposable income, Pastor, that it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We just send it over there because I want a blessing. And apparently it's not just, you know, you're not going to get a blessing because you might get a curse instead based on, on what you're explaining to us here today. And I think that's very scary. And I think Christians need to wake up to this. I mean, this be nice theology, which is the predominant theology. I mean, I've gone to, I can't tell you how many churches I've gone to in my area where I get it. You want to be nice as a Christian, but all, everything is about being nice. Be nice to your friends, be nice to your neighbor, be nice. And I get that. I get that. But the the church is like preaching 2% of the gospel message. And, and it's, it's quite honestly, I've watched a whole bunch of your sermons because it was informative. It was interesting. It was stuff I hadn't heard in church before. And I'm like, wow, this guy is standing up and saying things and he's preaching from the Bible. It's not like you've got your own theology and you've brought your theology to the Bible. You're just bringing the Bible uh, to everybody who needs to hear it. And I, I was just blown away by that. Um, is it just more financially? I, I know you're going to answer yes, but obviously these churches are, are into making money. They make their churches fun for kids. They have all kinds of fun things going on and um, but man, are, are, we're not, we're not hearing the truth at, at even close to where we need to hear it. Jesus dealt with it. He began his ministry by making a whip and going into the temple and whipping out those that sold in his house, making a merchandise of the people in there. He immediately ended his ministry by doing the same exact action. It, were, it was bookends on his ministry. It started with that. And then he went and did his first miracle. It ended with that. And then he went to the cross. So this is an important lesson. God hates it when people sell in the church. There's nothing wrong with a pastor being paid. I'm not paid. I work a full-time job currently. We will not sell anything in the church. Every event that we do is completely paid for by the church. I mean, just this Sunday, we had a visitor, first-time visitor, and she was looking at, we had sang an awesome hymn. She's like, what was that hymn, that first one? I really liked it. And I said, do you have a hymn at home? She says, no. I said, well, take that one with you. And I tell mm -hmm. people, like, you need a hymn, take one. You need a Bible, we give them away. We give away shirts and stickers. I do a ton of bumper stickers and marketing material. We like to go out into the marketplace and just give away this stuff and preach the gospel. The goal of our church is first to preach the gospel because that's what the purpose of a church is. And second, to come alongside the family, which is the first institution that God created. And the church is here to support the family. We have a lot of families and kids in our church and God is really blessing our church. And we are not going to support any of the wars anywhere. Our government is out of control. What's happening in Israel, regardless of what you think theologically, yeah. let's just look politically for a second. I want you right. to understand that we have broken international law by, by giving weapons that have killed innocent children. We're dropping 2,000-pound bombs on residential buildings. Yeah. The destruction over there is compared to be greater than the nuclear weapons that were dropped in Hiroshima. I mean, the, the, the world war, the damage after World War II, it's like we've leveled more buildings over there in Israel. All right, let me What's let me right now. We all know it. I mean, we've been prepared for it our entire life yeah. throughout movies and media and false prophets saying we need World War Three and it's going to be Israel and Iran. And of course, it's going to be China. And of course, it'll be Russia and the Christians are going to stand and we're going to defend we're going to defend Israel. But what if what if this isn't the Israel of the Bible? Yeah. What if it's not the Israel of God? Mm. Show me a place in the Bible where Jesus said, kill them before they kill you. Yeah, he, he so didn't. We defend our family. Right. And I'm all about defense. Yep. But to go and pick a fight in a foreign nation and call it godly. I mean, that's calling good evil and evil good. All right. Let me, I have to play a little devil's advocate here. Sorry to use that term, but. Uh-oh. Um, so. Somebody would say to me, but Dave, um, Hamas went in there on October 7th and slaughtered all these people. They just went over there and slaughtered a bunch of people. And what did you want Israel to do? What did, what did you want to happen after that? I mean, Hamas is a terrorist organization. I don't I don't deny that. I don't say Hamas is a, a good 
um, a good organization. I mean, I think of Hamas and I think a bunch of bad dudes, right? So oh, yeah. what do you what do you say to people who say Israel needed to retaliate and they need to eliminate Hamas? That's what I keep hearing. We need to eliminate Hamas. And if we have to hit women and children and all these, uh, as they like to call it, which is a horrible term, collateral damage, right? You hear that? They're just collateral damage. And I'm thinking, no, no, oh, they're no. human beings. They're human beings that needs to hear the gospel. Right. So, but what do you say to those people though? Well, if somebody attacks you, you defend yourself. And if you have to neutralize the attacker, you do it, but that's not what they did. There's a deeper problem with where Hamas gets their funding and training and how decades of wars now in the middle East, America has funded the bad guys and trained them. You go back to the 70s with Zygmunt Brzezinski on camera giving weapons to Osama bin Laden. George Bush was part of a what the Carlisle Group, a company that builds military bases in Saudi Arabia. And Osama bin Laden, Laden's brother is also part of that. They make money off building U.S. military bases together. We buy oil at you know five hundred dollars a gallon. It used to be. I don't even know what it is now. That over there, you know, just ridiculous yeah. prices we're giving to military contractors. We prop up NATO. If the country agrees, we'll bless them. But you have to buy your weapons through like North of Grumman and all these American contractors. You have to get your stuff through us so that we can all fight together. What's happening in Ukraine is not what everybody thinks it is. What's happening in Israel is not what everybody thinks it is. This is a false flag operation. It's a war that, I mean, they have a depopulation agenda. They've all said it. They want a great reset. They want yeah. to eliminate the average person. That's their stated goal, the rulers of darkness of this world. Now, as Christians, we need to defend our land, and we need to defend our children, and we need to train them up in biblical concepts so we know what the right thing to do is. Yeah. But it breaks my heart when you look at the amount of destruction that they've done in the name of an attack or two, where they're just, I mean, dare I use the word genocide? That's a word that has been misused in the media for years but when you're just wholesale wiping out men women and children that's a different race or religion than you that's kind of a big deal christian nationalism goes hand in hand with political zionism christian nationalism has its roots in the catholic church and all of the protestants now the protestants are those that came out of the catholic church most bible believers were never part of the catholic church your reformers, John Calvin, you know, he personally oversaw many executions of people that disagreed with him politically. Calvinism is a wicked false doctrine. It paints God in a different light. It makes the gospel works if you endure to the end. This concept called kingdom theology or dominionism, this is what Christian nationalism is. And Christian nationalism sounds appealing on the surface. Well, hey, we need to have politicians that vote for the right thing. Well, I would say amen to that. But mm -hmm. the politicians are part of the problem. We've gotten so far away from what God's design is. People want the easy out. They won't rule their own lives or their own houses. They delegate uh, the instruction of their children to Sunday schools or to public schools, and they're not doing it themselves. And when their children come back as strangers that vote yeah. against them and they're liberal and communistic, they're like, my children are strangers. And it's like, well, that's because you chose not to train them yourself. You broke one of God's laws. He mm -hmm. says, thou shalt teach them diligently. It's our job as right. parents to train up our children. And per we are personally responsible for their religion, for their philosophy, for their faith, for their personality. I mean, like we get to train them and develop them to be like Jesus. That's our goal. Yeah. I saw when I went to New York years ago, I saw this shirt and they were selling on the street corner and it said, what would Jesus bomb? <laughs> And at first I was offended because I thought that was blasphemous and perhaps it is. But if this is the world's perspective of Christianity, well, we better go bomb them over there before they come and get us. Well, that sounds yeah. like the spirit of fear. And we've not been given the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We, we need to have a clear mind when it comes to politics. We have spent over $300 billion in Iran. I'm sorry, in Israel, we've given them about $300 billion. 
Yeah. And we've given like 200 billion, I think now to Ukraine, uh, Ukraine. We've mm -hmm. spent about $4 trillion, I believe it is in foreign aid all around the world. Why? So that we can prop up one group that works with us politically, or at least works with the preferred corporations. We call that fascism. Yeah. And so the result is you have another group that has been oppressed and hurt and afflicted, and they want vengeance and they're trained up and they have weapons and they hate this American political system because we destroyed their parents. Yeah. That's a horrible enemy. Yeah. We've made enemies. Instead of being peacemakers, we're, we're dropping bombs around the world. Now, the only thing we can do to fix it is preach the gospel. And I don't say that lightly. I know that's kind of like, oh, come on. What do we No, We need to like vote them in. You need to preach the gospel and get people saved. We need to preach the gospel. If we will change the hearts of individuals one at a time, we can make a difference. And one at a time, people will begin to wake up, get in the word of God, see what God says. Now, the problem is, are the preachers in America? Yeah. Yeah, most I, of them, most of your Calvinists and Catholics preach on millennialism or, or post-millennialism. They think, no, there's nothing to come. It's already done. Or it's only going to get better by force. In fact, that is their doctrine. We're supposed to bring God's kingdom in by the sword. Well, that's not a Christian doctrine either. That's Catholic. That's papal. And it's oppressive. And that's using the Bible to manipulate people. As Bible-believing Christians, we need to preach the gospel, and we're going to be persecuted, but that's all right. He that is in us is greater than he that's in the world, right? The Lord yeah. Jesus Christ has given Amen. us of his Holy Spirit, and he's given us the Holy Scriptures, and those two things are greater than everything else in the world. I thank God for the peace that we have in America, uh, but I think the writing is on the wall. I believe the powers that be have already ordained and established another false flag attack inside of America so that they can establish martial law and begin to take away the rights of individuals, the rights of self-defense, and uh, the rights of homeschooling will be under attack, and the right to assemble yourself in a church, again, will be under attack. If you look back at the history of, the, of America, there were many Presbyterians that persecuted Baptists, and the Baptists took a beating, and they said, I don't care, we're still going to go out and preach the gospel. And so I think we're going to see a resurgence. You know, just like the early church, they were hiding and meeting in houses and going into other areas to save their lives. I think we'll see the same thing at the end of the church as we get close to what happens in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Wow. Um, so your hope obviously is, is the gospel, which is uh, the ultimate hope, Jesus Christ. Um, as, as far as 2024, <laughs> um, you were talking about uh, things like martial law and uh, maybe false flag attack, maybe some large distraction. I was saying this last year, like just, I don't know what it's going to be, but after what, after 2020, I mean, where, you know, we had COVID and we had all of that. Was, was your church, by the way, let me ask you a question. Was your church open during COVID? Not only were we open, we were out knocking doors and preaching the gospel. <laughs> we were getting bad reviews for it. I was preaching sermons against the satanic stab and Google was taking down my sermons. So <laughs> Uh, one video I did about Bill Gates hit 2 million views, and then oh. they started doing articles about it on mainstream. And it's just like, it started, you know, I thought I was going to lose the YouTube channel, which it is what it is. I know they're going to silence us all at some point. Yeah. And so I'm just thankful that God given us a platform to share preaching all around the world. Just, just yesterday, I got two letters from people in different states that watch online. And it's amazing. It encourages me. You know, I, I want to help people by telling them the truth. And I believe there's still a lot of good churches out there that are well-meaning but they're just not connecting the dots on the truth about the end times. And they say, well, we have to bless Israel. And you say, well, what does that mean? If I said support Israel, you mean, well, what do you mean? Like, you want to fund the hospital? Do you want to fund the bombs? Yeah. You mean we need to defend them from bullies or have they become a bully and we need to support them in being a bully? We use these generic terms, support Israel. It's like, what does that mean? Yeah. Well, who is Israel? Well, yeah. what if... Israel is not what it appears to be, as it says in Romans. Not all of Israel are of Israel. They're not saved because the children of the flesh are not the children of God. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If you don't believe on Jesus, you're not saved. If you're trusting in your works, you're not saved. Or if you say, hey, I'm trusting in my circumcision and my I give a sacrifice at the altar. Well, I'm sorry, that won't do. That's blasphemy when you say you're a Jew and you're not, but you're of the synagogue of Satan, it tells us in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. And Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. 
You can also look in, in Romans at the end of chapter two, it gives us that same indication. Who is a Jew? One that's circumcised in the heart. heart yeah. That's not a new concept for Christians. That's always existed. You find it multiple times in Deuteronomy where he says, circumcise your heart, separate your heart. Salvation is a matter of the heart, not saying, well, I've got this bloodline. No, that doesn't matter. That won't get you saved. Yeah, but I did. I checked off the list. Of, I tithe twice in a week i tithe of every of, of every herb i plant in my garden well that's what the pharisees said yeah interestingly enough rabbinical judaism claims to be from the pharisees that's where they claim their heritage and their origin now i want to i want you to see this cuz this is super important for christians this is in the book of first peter and it's speaking of the lord jesus christ and desire the sincere milk of the word uh, we are he was, he was the living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, impression. Then he says, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. Hey, if you're wondering why you're politically homeless, <laughs> it's because you belong to heavenly Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all, it says in Hebrews, that's up in the sky. You're not <laughs> going to find a home for your politics if you're a Christian in, in this world. If you do, no. I, you might be in the wrong house. Okay. <laughs> well, he says that we it's are, good news for me. Amen. He says, we're a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Let me tell you, if they build the third temple and if they slaughter a red heifer, that's blasphemy against the Lord Jesus Christ. It's blasphemous. And if any Christian supports it, they don't know their scripture, or maybe they're not really a Christian. Maybe they're a Christian in name only. He goes yeah. on, he says, let's see, he says, a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, still speaking of Jesus, it offended those that were religious. Right. He says, but right. ye are a chosen generation. This is yeah. speaking to Christian. A royal priesthood and holy nation. Christians are a holy nation. It's a spiritual house. We are the peculiar people. Why? That we should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. You are God's chosen people. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the chosen people. You cannot go back to the old sacrifice. He's done away with that. There is no new old covenant. The old covenant has passed away. There is no salvation for anybody under the old covenant. No one can work their way to heaven and get saved. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you are an antichrist. Now, you look at the modern uh, Jews of today, so-called. And again, and this is the problem with the term. You say Jew, and it's like, are you talking about the religion or the state? Are you talking about the ethnicity? I preached a sermon about it where I dealt with Zionism is the politics. Yeah. Semitism is a bloodline. Right. And if you look up on Webster's today, Semitism, if you, if you have a preference for Semites, that's called Semitism. It's a form of racism. Now, if you say, I don't like the politics of war, oh, you're an anti-Semite, you're a racist. Well, no, 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 I'm not a racist. God made all nations of one blood. Being a racist is a sin according to the Bible. I don't uh, dislike the Jews. In fact, they need Jesus Christ. They need to believe that Jesus was their Christ and stop looking for another Christ. Then they can be saved. Yeah. So yeah. Sem Semites mm -hmm. are those that come from Shem. Israelite, as we understand it today, here's the problem. They say, well, that nation is Israel. Well, they were going to call it um, Judah, is my understanding, originally, and then they changed it and said, no, we're going to call it Israel. So Israel is a nation politically today that is different from the nation that politically existed under God's blessing. Yeah. And so now it's this, well, God says to bless Israel. Well, but what if the people that are over there now are not Israel? Just as much as the Catholic Church is not a Christian church, mm -hmm. the Israel in the Middle East is not the Israel of the Bible. Neither one are a biblical representation of God's people. The first time you see the word Jews in the Bible, they were at war with Israel. So yeah. we have to make this distinction. You right. look at the mostly European, Germanic, uh, Ukrainian, Russian, Khazarian Jews today. For instance, um, what's that famous commentator, um, uh, Ben Shapiro? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ben, okay, so ben Shapiro is a German. Okay. I Shapiro didn't know is a river, if I remember correctly, in Germany. Shapiro is? Yeah. Yeah. So he claims to be a Jew. Well, he claims to be a Khazarian Jew. 
What does that mean? Well, I am a German that converted to Judaism. And if you don't like my politics, I'm going to call you a racist. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. That's a little confusing. <laughs> now, Israel is a nationalist state. If you want to become a, a member of the nation, what do you have to do? Do you know? Um, I think you have to re one of the things you have to do is renounce Jesus, right? Correct. Yeah. You have to renounce Jesus and convert to Judaism. Yeah. So if you're a Christian, you reject Christianity, become a Jew. In the Bible, those that were Jews got saved. They were no longer called Jews. They're now called Christians. Right. right. So they're trying to undo what the gospel has done. Wow. This is, uh, this is some pretty enlightening stuff. I think, uh, people need to watch this video, share this video. Um, we're, a, we're a little toward the end here. I was, I was hoping to go about an hour. So, um, I did want to ask you, um, one question I think that, which is interesting, which is not necessarily about what we've been talking about. You're a huge uh, proponent of the King James version of the Bible. Nice. Um, I started with a King James, and then I was told that the King James had errors in it, and um, because of the wording was confusing, and and uh, there are a lot of issues with the King James, and um, we've found better manuscripts since the King James, and we've made you know newer versions. I've noticed though that Bible versions. Uh, pastor just keep coming out like every year there's another version there's an update to an older version i think the niv was updated recently i think the nasb might have been updated recently Correct. uh the n the what is it the new revised standard version was even updated recently so this version yeah Correct. there's so many updates to these bibles i mean isn't the word of god settled i mean and and if it's all right let me I, that was kind of a naive statement in a way well, um, actually, it says in Psalms, it's forever settled in heaven. Okay. All right. So, so he you. said it, it exists. We have 5,000 copies of it, but we have a problem. They, in the 1600s, the Catholics discovered two new manuscripts and they said, oh, these are really old. They're like from the 300s and 400s. Therefore, right. they're older. Therefore, they're better. And they used a very new technique of biblical translation and interpretation to go with the odd instead of the obvious. They went with the uh, unique instead of the standardized, which is why it's called the critical text instead of the received text. We have 5,000 plus 6,000 copies, different pieces and parts and copies that all confirm each other. And then the Catholics came up with these two copies. And shortly thereafter, they added it with two others. They're all often called the four unseals. An unseal is an all capitalized, no space, very difficult to read translation. And with it, you have the obvious verses missing and deleted would be like uh, Acts 8.37. The question is asked, what doth hinder me to be baptized? Hey, I want to get baptized. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Now, why would that verse be missing out of almost all of the brand new Bibles? Well, the Catholics, they used to, uh, they like baptizing babies because it was part of uh, uh, your access yeah. to heaven. You know, you're yeah. entering into the covenant. That's what your right. Calvinists would teach. Yeah. And with that, they wanted to charge you a nickel. They knew who was on the roll and <laughs> they wanted their taxes from you. So it was a form of manipulation. Uh, and I'm just going to show you this. This is live. This is blueletterbible.org. And mm -hmm. you see the same thing here. I'll just show you this Bibles. And when you look at it, Oh, footnote. Yeah text in M text omit this verse it's in Western even the new King James begins to attack it many Bibles simply delete it there's nothing there whatsoever the majority of them completely but no remove it <laughs> and it's just not even there wow so why would they de delete the verse the one verse that's really telling you what you have to do well because they have a different agenda they right. want to attack God's word now I do have a handout on that let me give you that also it is let's see here lawoflibertybaptist.com i believe it's bible.png there it is and this oh, is wow. available for anybody you can go to lawoflibertybaptist.com bible.png and this gives you the following verses are completely taken away they're completely deleted 
And then with that, I also show line by line many things that are changed. And, you know, this does actually change doctrine. So they have these four, the Codex Vaticanus, Codex Sinaiticus. Those are the primary two. And with that, they have changed all of the new Bibles. They're all based on that. The Nestle, Aland, um, you know, Greek New Testament, which was a right. conglomerate of things. Mm -hmm. since it's like 27th edition. Everybody points to that and says, well, this is the source. Well, where did it come from? Well, it was part of the critical text. It was not the majority text. It was the minority. It was, uh, there's this difference between Alexandrian text and Antioch, which is where we were first called Christians. So Antioch had the right scripture. Alexandria had all the heresies about Jesus being God. And so they chose those scripts to prop up a Catholic universal church. And so there are many attacks on the word of God from there. And let me give you this also. Let me see. There's, I'm going to, I'll just have to create a, a list. And there is, a uh, there's the YouTube page too, for folks that might want to check out more uh, of um, your preaching and teaching over there. Here's a couple good ones. Questions about the King James Bible. I give a really good rundown. Um, there's one I preached recently. Yeah, this was interesting. The gunpowder plot and the pre, you know, Guy Fawkes was actually, this is a really good one here. Why I'm still King James. I went through a lot of the things that are missing in the other ones. Um, Guy Fawkes was trying to blow up parliament. He was attacking the King James translators, that's what was happening at the time. It was a Catholic attack because they were uh, fixing the problems that were there with the Catholic Bible. The Catholics only wanted you to have the Bible in Latin, so you had to come to a man to understand what it meant. Well, the goal was that everybody would know what God's Word is and so that we could all read it for ourselves and we could see exactly what the Word of God is. And so there are many attacks on the King James Bible, and I know there are people that, oh, but I heard this and I heard that. Well, just, just prove it for yourself. Prove it for yourself, because these other Bibles all have the same source, and that's Codex Vaticanus, found in the Vatican in a trash mm -hmm. heap, and Codex Sinaiticus, same story there. Both of these were like, oh, well, these were put away. And then you open it, you can even go look at the scan online of it, and you can see where things have been erased. You can see the margins and the drawings are not 3rd, 4th century. They are 15th, 16th century art. And so they are basically forgeries that are being put forth as the best manuscript. And so when all these other Bible versions, if you ever see it, says, well, the newer manuscripts or the best manuscripts omit this, why did they omit it? Why did they delete all of the end of Mark? Why did they delete 1 John 5, 7? There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Well, because that's the Godhead. These three are one God, and we are made right. in His image. These are important doctrines that are under attack. And so the way to do it is to change the Bible. And the most obvious, if you're ever wondering if you have a fake Bible, uh, <laughs> let me show you this. I'll go back to the Blue Letter Bible page here. And if we just go to Genesis 1, and I've got a ton of Bibles on the shelf here behind me. I could share with you and show you some of these. In the beginning, God created the heaven mm -hmm. and the earth. Now, the, the earth is where human beings would live. The right. heaven is where the angels would live, and God would yeah. create his throne. Yeah. Now, every other Bible version changes this to heavens, plural, if Satan is going to attack the Bible, he's going to start on page one, wow. verse First, one, and yeah. one letter can make a huge difference. If you said, hey, Brother Fannin, do you have a wife? And I said, I have wives. <laughs> Boy, adding that S kind of makes it a different <laughs> thing, right? Which, no, I have one wife, and I yeah. thank God for her. Uh, so check this out. Amen. It says, and I'll show you, tools, Bibles, New King James, heavens, heavens. Yeah. Heavens, yep. heavens, heavens. Okay. All your fake Bibles change it to heavens. Well, the original, no, the argument stands in the original. This is correct with the King James translators, and I believe God did use them. Now, he gets to day two. That's the first day. He said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, divide the waters from the waters. He goes on about these, and he calls it heaven. Yeah. On day Again. two. God created another heaven. Yeah. The first day he created what's commonly called the third heaven it's called paradise in second Corinthians 12. He created his place 
Then he began to create what we call space and sky, two separate heavens. On the fifth day, he calls sky where the birds are at. He calls it the open firmament of heaven. So there's three heavens. He did not create them all on the first day. He created his heaven on the first day. Any Bible that says heavens has made it a contradiction. So where's the devil attacking? The word of God. Why? Because my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. If you can make it confusing, then it will keep us from being as sharp as God wants us to be. So I believe the Bible translation is a big issue. But now I'm, I am King James only, but I am not King James ugly. <laughs> if you were to quote a verse right now and you use the NIV, I'm not going to blow you out of the water and call you names and all that kind of stuff. I would rather prove it to you through the scriptures and lovingly pray for you that you would see the truth so that because <laughs> the truth will make you free as many others. And uh, what is that? Uh, uh, John eight thirty two. they say it will set you free. Well, if you're a bird that's been set free, you can be caught again. But God makes you a new man with his Holy uh, Spirit. You are made new. You're a new creation. You can't be unmade. So wow. you're made free. And that's the truth of the King James Bible. Be glad to have a whole conversation on that with you one day. Yeah, yeah. We might have to do just a whole video just on that topic. And, you know, touching on these topics uh, as the first uh, video between you and I today, I think is is a good start. Um, I'd love to have you back if, if you want to come back here. Uh, we can make this a, a weekly or biweekly, or we can figure out, you know, depending on maybe something is in the news that needs to be discussed. I wanted to really highlight um, this Ukraine-Israel war spending uh, issue because, you know, Christians, non-Christians, um, the, the people just kind of know, hey, there, there's something wrong. There's something, I mean, they're all cheering. I don't know if you saw the pictures of the 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 Congress people with their, their Ukrainian flags waving them from the floor of the House of Representatives. I mean, I mean, what kind of laws are we breaking here as we're as we're doing this stuff? I mean, it's we're, absurd. I mean, and I'm not the most patriotic guy on the planet right now, but this is America for crying out loud. It's America. It's not what, when do you see other countries waving flags of countries that aren't their own? I mean, just, it's, it's weird that we're just kind of transferring all the wealth away from the people that are going to Walmart, like I say, and it's like three bags and 84 yeah. bucks. I hate to keep bringing that up, but that's, I have the receipt in case anyone wants you, to see. You're not it, so. bitter, are you? No, not at all. <laughs> Be of good cheer. <laughs> um, anyway, well, Pastor, it's only going to get worse. Yeah, I'm. They're destroying I'm, the economy. We 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 printed trillions of dollars. The central banks have absolutely ruined the American economy, and we're and we're sending money to another nation, but we won't fix our own border. Yeah, I mean, oh. if we're going to give away money, which I don't believe in welfare, why don't we feed our children instead of buying bombs to kill other people's children? That's ungodly. Correct. I mean, and I'm not, you know, again, I, I'm not into wealth redistribution, but I'm thinking, yeah. you know, you have a little, oh, say you have a, a a little thing in Flint, Michigan there with the water, you know, you might, you might be able to fix that in like a day. Um, you have that little thing that happened in East Palestine, Ohio, where the train derails and you have all right. these chemicals in the soil and the fish are dying there. And the president and Trump and Biden both went there. And, oh, he, Trump gave away his uh, branded water. To, to everybody because that you know they had fresh drinking water i guess for a few what, what hours what did jesus say whenever uh you know you have your reward you know sound a big trumpet when you give money away yeah you have your reward yeah or seen of men not of god god sees your heart right well everything's a photo op these days and nobody's really solving any problems anyway pastor um i thank you very much for for being on here uh, I hope that uh, this didn't ruin either one of our reputations. For you coming on. <laughs> Not that I had any reputation, so it didn't really matter. Um, but you seem like a very nice man. Tell us a little bit about your church before you go, because if I would say, folks, if you're within, I'm going to say if you're within 100 miles of Jacksonville, Florida, it, it might be worth driving to this church for a Sunday morning, but make it like a day trip, go out there, yeah. enjoy the weather, enjoy the scenery. I'm sure the area is very nice, but, um, I have watched, I, I don't know. I've probably watched about 50 sermons since I first spoke to you. Um, I had, you know, just on, it's going on the phone while I'm driving around, picking up my kids and doing certain things. And it, it just, so anyway, tell us about your church and, um, Anything else you want to give your sure, social yeah. so, social media well, coordinates or any of that stuff? We started the church uh, six and a half years ago. 
And, um, boy, God's been good to us. We have a lot of good families. And then on our sixth year anniversary, we actually merged with another church where their pastor quit. The church was dying. They're in a bunch of debt. And basically the Lord gave us a million dollar property. Wow. And Amen. Wow. But with that, now we have a ton of room for the kids. We have uh, prophets chambers. We've been able to host missionaries and other families coming through. We can put them up like an Airbnb. We have a huge fellowship hall. We have events. We do a super salad Sunday every month. We go out soul winning on Saturdays and Sundays. And um, I work a full-time job and I'm praying the Lord to help me just be able to connect the dots so I can be a full-time evangelist and go out preaching the gospel every day. Like that's my goal. That's my dream. And um, so working toward that and asking the Lord to just take care of business there. And um, it, he's, it's just kind of amazing what he's done here recently. And we have a lot of good people that just love the Lord. And, you know, we are old fashioned church. We're King James only. And we are, you know, we do the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We, we're not a rock and roll church. You know, we're kind of old fashioned in that regard. A lot of the families homeschool because they see the value in training up their children. Um, we, we see folks saved every week with God's grace. I mean, because it's his word that saves. Um, I gave away, I did a couple YouTube videos about uh, once saved, always saved, how the gospel's free. And I, I gave this offer to give out stickers and I sent a bunch out and I've got some folks I need to send more to, but um, I want to make this offer to your viewers also. Um, here's a sticker. I just got about 150 of them in. And if you send me your address at law of Liberty Baptist at Gmail, I will put one of these in the mail for you free of charge and send it to you. So nice. that's something I'll send to all your viewers. And if uh, somebody sees this that is waning on the other stickers, I'll, I'll send you one of these also. I'm going to bundle them up and try to I get might, those out. There. I might have to send you an email. All right. So perfect. <laughs> I'll, I'll load you up, brother. Yeah. I've got several stickers we do. Um, uh, once saved, always saved, make America born again. Nice. Good father ones. Let me pull up my favorite. Make America born again. That's awesome. Um, yeah. It, I mean, this is, oh, yeah. Let's, let me stop talking. That's kind of a, controversial. I know, but. <laughs> uh, not, not to me. It's not. Um, I'm not to me. Uh, I know. You look, it's, um, we, I, I don't know. I don't want to get all philosophical here at the end, but um, we're here to do something, right? We're all here to do something. We're all put here for a reason. Um, and you have to, I think, realize what that reason is, right? A lot of people say, oh, you know, there's, there's a reason for everything, right? But um, until you really dig into the scriptures and, and understand what your purpose is, because God will tell you, um, God will give you plenty to do in this life, whether it's raising a family or um, a job maybe that you, that you have that's important. Um, and there are other things you need to do, like tell, tell other people, about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and and not to just um, think that it's just going to happen by osmosis. I mean, people unfortunately don't get it, right? They if they because if they all got it and it was uh, you know like Calvinists teach, right, where everybody just uh, the people who are chosen uh, they get it and everybody else doesn't get it. Otherwise, why would you evangelize anybody? Because you know you'd, you'd be giving up on. Um, a whole bunch of people. I see you have a book in your hand, Pastor. <laughs> this is a great read. It's The Other Side of Calvinism, written by Lawrence Vance. You can find it on Amazon. And then look at his other books. Uh, he's a libertarian. He is an anti-war libertarian. That's how I first heard of him, writing for the Lou Rockwell blog. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I have heard of it. I think I've probably been on that site a couple of times, but not recently. But um, now, I am not an anti-war protester, purple hair, pro-Palestinian, some of the ones, the false flag stuff you see in the street where they're funded by the, the bad guys on the left, you know, yeah. but listen, we're supposed to be peacemakers. And if any Christians are listening to this and you have your doubts, you're a skeptic, you say, but, but doesn't it say over here that Israel this and Israel that? Let's remember we're in the new covenant. We are called the Israel of God in Galatians 6. Yeah. Galatians chapter 3 tells you that Jesus is the seed. He was the answer. He's the blessing to all of the earth. We're not called to be warmongers. We're called to be peacemakers. Amen. And any Christians that struggle with this, and you know, because perhaps their whole life they've heard that if you don't bless Israel, then boy, God's going to get you. I want you to just go to the Lord on it and go to the scriptures. And, and because there's a lot of propaganda, political propaganda that's very confusing. It's deceiving people. It's leading Christians astray. Yeah. It's causing us to hate the Muslims. And listen, I'm not a pro 
Muslim in any way. Uh, some will say, well, they at least believe in Jesus. They at least believe Jesus was a prophet, prophet and a good yeah. prophet. Yeah. Whereas Israel says that he's burning an excrement in hell. I mean, that's Judaism. That's in the Talmud. For those that don't know, Judaism today has nothing to do with the Bible. It's based on what's called the Babylonian Talmud. It's a pagan book that is uh, that says it's okay to steal from people and to hurt people and molest. Just You got to look into it for yourself. The Babylonian Talmud is a horrible book, and this is what these great scholars are reading when they claim to be Israel today and justifying their sins of war. America has no business over there. If we go to war in the Middle East and they begin to draft your sons and your daughters, um, I think a lot of the Christians that have been wanting this to happen so they can get zapped out of here, it's going to put a curse on their house and they're going to lose children in war in the Middle East. The only thing you can do is take a biblical stand, which is I'm not fighting a war for anybody. Amen. I'm not going to go. I'm not interested. I'm not involved. I'm not, I pray for the peace of the Middle East. People will right. say, yeah, but doesn't it say pray for the peace of Jerusalem? I believe that's uh, Psalm 122, where it literally says, because the house of the Lord is there. And I ask you, is the house of the Lord there? Or are we the temple of God? Because Christianity says that we're the temple. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And so when it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Why? Because the house of the Lord, our God, will I seek thy good. It's because the house of the Lord is there. This is a different Jerusalem. It's a different Israel. It's a different religion. It's a different people. Yeah. And I just wish Christians would wake up to that. Yeah. All right. Well, well said. And uh, you gave us a lot of scripture, which I think is important for Christians who watch this video. Um if somebody has a question and they wanted to reach out to you, um, should they email you? What's the best way to to reach uh, Pastor sure. Adam? Email, call, come by the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, say somebody sees this on the other side of the country. They live in Washington State and they want to they want to get more information, or they just want to chew your ear off for a little while. Um, and I, I know you're probably you're probably kind of busy, but um, you know, should they just send you an email or or what's the What's the best way? Uh, I guess the nicest thing would, if you want to chew me out, do it over email or mail me a letter <laughs> like a lot of people do. That would be the the kinder <laughs> way to do it. Um, if you want to stop by, we're in Jacksonville, Florida. Yep. And like I, I said earlier, um, if you're... You say, I'm, you want to give me a call, it's online. Yeah, I'm at the point where I would um, I would travel. I'm, I'm probably about four hours from you, but I would... Me and the wife are thinking about uh, taking a day trip just to to say hello and um, go up there. So I would I would recommend uh, if you want to hear the gospel. And then of course you're online, you're on YouTube as well. Do you uh, live stream your sermons, Pastor? We do. I've been live streaming since the beginning for about six years. All right. Well, there you go. If if you can't, you know, you can't swing the commute, um, you could certainly watch online. Pastor Adam Fannin from the Law of Liberty Baptist Church. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Hey, thank you for the opportunity. And hey, praise the Lord. Listen, we need to preach the gospel. Salvation is free. It's a free gift. He says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's free and it's forever. And that's the only good news that can help in these hard times. So I pray that's a blessing to you.